Okay guys, so this is finally it. The moment that I've been waiting for for nine months. It is battery time. Um, as I said in the last video, I explained everything about why lithium, why we're going this route, um, and why I'm doing a DIY build. Uh, so if you want to know any more about that, click up here <laughs> and find out a little bit more of that, and then come back to this video. Just a really quick reminder, all of the next videos in this series are already up on our Patreon, so just click the link down below, and you can see then there's three more videos after this one. Let's get back to the video, enjoy. This battery build is a, it's a lithium iron phosphate 600 amp bar 12 volt system. So it's relatively big, um, much bigger than what we've currently got on the boat. And yeah, I just wanted to talk you through each component of the actual battery before we actually start making it and putting it into the system. Beyond this, there's a whole other system with um, new bus bars and DC to DC things going in. The whole system's getting changed, so that will be a kind of a series of videos. So right now it's just about building this battery and actually getting this process started because as I said, we have had these batteries for six months. I ordered them nine months ago and now it's time to actually get this going. So let's get through it. Okay, so this is kind of sort of half the stuff. Um, I have four more batteries and another box, but the actual backbone of the system is this right here. These are 3.2 volt, 300 amp bar cells. So that means this is a 12 volt battery once it's all connected up. So all the prices for everything here is gonna be either on the screen here or just down below in the description. So if you wanna have a look at that and also with links as to where I've actually got some of this stuff from. So this is from a company called Shenzhen Basin. It's a Chinese manufacturer. Everything's arrived relatively good and balanced and they've all got their QR codes and stuff like that. So these seem to be pretty sound. After this, the most important thing is probably the BMS. Um, there's a lot of arguments as to you know how much you should actually spend on a BMS, and I probably would have chose something different if we had the money or if I could wait for um, parts. But these are pretty basic Dali BMSs. These are 120 amp. Okay, so what actually is the point in the BMS? And before I say anything, I am not a professional, but this is my understanding, is this kind of just keeps a general balance of the battery. It also allows for a high voltage cutoff and also a low voltage cutoff. Um, so this stops your batteries overcharging and undercharging. And effectively without this, batteries will be probably damaged unless you're only charging through solar and then you've got a good solar controller. So in theory, I could do without this because I'm using really good solar controllers and the whole system's gonna be pretty good. But, um, yeah, this is a fundamental part and it's pretty much like your safety backbone. Without this, there's risks of really anything going wrong. So you don't want it super cheap, but also it doesn't need to be crazy expensive. If you've got the other things in your system, pretty smart to allow it to be dumb, which this is. Okay, so this thing in the middle is actually a charger and the charger is solely just to charge the batteries up the first time. However, I got this, this arrived yesterday and this is what I've been waiting for to start this whole process. And I turned it on yesterday and it worked for about one hour and then it stopped. So I'm gonna to have to return that and put this whole thing on pause, but at least I have it, I can do this video and we can come back. So effectively this charges the batteries up so that they're all exactly the same voltage. So, so although these batteries actually got sent to me all the exact same, well, virtually the exact same voltage, um, the way lithium works is it's got a really flat curve and it could be 30% charged and 60% charged and the voltage could be exactly the same. So the only way to know you've actually got your batteries completely balanced that they're the same is to charge them all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. Um, for the system that I'm gonna get, it's much easier to do it all the way to the top. So they'll all be maxed out at the exact same place. So that is the point of the charger, which is kind of really frustrating that it's broken, but don't buy this one, but if I get a good one, I'll put it in the description below. And um, yeah, we'll come back to that because that's the next part of this video. <laughs> okay, so that's everything at the front. Um, once we go to the back here, this is possibly an unnecessary step. This is an active balancer. The point of this is, is you plug in these cables, the cables then go onto the batteries and it creates a draw and actively tries to balance these as though they're the same. But yeah, as I said, this is something that a lot of people would suggest is not really necessary. The reason for it is if you do a balance, a top balance in the first place, like I hope to do with the charger, then this is kind of pointless. It's, it's using energy um, and really not getting you much value. But on the other hand, 
it's an extra safety thing that if your battery bank's big enough, it's using such a small amount of current that it might, it might make the system last a little bit longer. Ultimately, it could make it worse and this, this could be something that I can take off and I'll adjust the description down below or I'll put an annotation somewhere to say that I have not used this. But for now, um, the plan is to use it just to actually make the system a little bit more reliable. And in relation to that, we have this. This is just a simple display. It shows the combined voltage and it shows the difference in voltage compared to the one um, cell and the other. So this, just from a glance, can show me that cell one is higher than cell three. And if that is getting to a point where it's bad, then it means that cell three either needs replaced or that I need to take it out and do another top balance. Again, possibly an unnecessary step and a lot of people would say that you don't need it, but I'd rather have it. So that's why it's here. Final real component to this battery is Don't know if you can see it. So yeah, this is a Victron SmartSense. Um, I actually thought I had two of these. It turns out I only have one, um, which isn't really too much of an issue because the whole purpose of this is that it is actually just telling you the temperature of your batteries. Uh, so Victron stuff is really good. It, it'll talk to all other Victron components like my MPPTs um, and the DC to DC chargers. This will talk to those and say, yo, batteries are too hot or batteries are too cold, don't charge. So this is a really, really important thing because the only thing with lithium is, although it has a really good range, it can't be charged in super cool temperatures um, or super hot temperatures. I'll never hit the super hot temperatures, but we could hit um, below zero, technically below five degrees Celsius. Um, and that's a problem. Unlikely that we're gonna hit below five degrees Celsius, but it's it's completely possible. So so yeah, that's the display. Smart Sense. We've got all of our bus bars and, and nuts. We've got a pair of wire strippers because it's important, and uh, a multimeter, just a basic multimeter. And that's pretty much it. And it's all going to go into this box. But I have two of them, one for each battery. Um, and I just made these last week. It's just out of uh, marine grade MDF, so it should be pretty good with water uh, or damp. Really, it shouldn't swell. And I might just put a lid on it or a bit of polystyrene. I haven't quite decided that yet, but there's just some bits of rope for handles. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole system. Hopefully, fingers crossed, a pretty straightforward procedure of actually putting these together. Again, this thing is now the reason why this can't happen right now. So I'm going to have to put a pause on the rest of this video and come back in a couple of weeks when I get a new one of these. Um, unfortunately, typically everything takes Two weeks to come here um so i now have to wait for another one of these it's just not turning on at all so yeah once this is in then we can get these charged up so i'll, I'll kind of skip to that and we can show you show us charging this battery up right so now that i've checked all of the voltages in the batteries and made sure that they're all pretty similar at like 2.92 ish um they all need to go up to be the exact same level. The important thing with these kind of batteries is the voltages stay really similar through the whole kind of cycle until it gets to like the bottom 20% of battery. So between 20 and 80%, the voltages are pretty consistent. So the only way to make sure that they're all exactly the same before you put them together into a battery, um, which makes them uh, just, it makes them last longer. It means you get the more use out of the batteries instead of one cell saying it's full. Um, and the other, in this case, the other seven batteries are only half full, which is a risk that can happen if you if you don't balance them all properly. So to do this, um, I've just got a really cheap um, charger. The point of this charger is it, it just allows you to put in an exact voltage that you want the batteries to be charged to. So I'm going to put all of these guys into parallel. So we've got all the positives on one side, all the negatives on the other. Once they're all linked up in parallel, then we can connect the battery charger and set it to um, a consistent thing, which for us is gonna be about 3.65 volts. That's gonna charge all of them until they're exactly 3.65 volts. And then once it's stopped, that means you know they're balanced. Let's do that now and get everything sorted. This could take, it could take a while. This only charges at like five amps. Um, and this is a pretty big battery bank, so, in theory, depending on how flat this, these batteries actually are, this could take hours, it could take a day, um, 
we'll see. Our last point just before I put these together. See in each of the batteries there's a little mark that says positive. Uh, maybe it's just me, uh, but I think the best thing to do is actually just to check that properly with your voltage meter just to make sure that they actually are the right markings because these things are cheap and that could be a really simple thing that they could mess up on in the factory. So I've checked all of them, they're all good. So time to get them all connected up and yeah, definitely do that. You do not want to you don't want to ruin your batteries before you even get them started, so that's the first step. Next bit of advice is don't make this rookie mistake. <laughs> I ordered extra bus bars, apparently they did not send enough, so we only have enough to do half of the bank. So uh, yeah, just going to have to do these in two parts. <sighs> so stupid, oh, it's, it literally is the simplest things that you just forget to, to sort out. So. Let's just get to it. So we're going to just screw these down. Left these on the end here, and that's just easy. It makes it easier to clamp on the uh, the power supply cables. So that's the reason for that. Okay, so we're all connected up. Nuts are on top there, and we have this set up. We have this set up to be at 3.65 volts, and that's going to run at one amp. But I can turn up the amps as soon as it starts. But yeah, so let's get it connected up and get these going. Okay, so we're now charging these first four cells. So basically I've got everything set to 3.65 volts and that's kind of the peak that I wanted to set at. Um, this goes up to six amps and you can see we're currently doing 3.92, up to four. And so basically the reason it's sitting at four, even though I've got it set at six, is it's pumping through power to 3.65 volts and as it gets further up, it gets more difficult to actually give the full six amps. So as that comes down, eventually that will be trickling in not point not not one amp. At that point, the battery's fully charged, um, and yeah. So we we just that's pretty much how we do it. It's really straightforward. I don't have to do anything. I just wish I had more bus bars to do the whole thing at once. It's those little stupid things that just make the job take so much longer. But the good thing is it's happening now. It's working away, and um, yeah, hopefully by a couple of hours, these first four will be done, and I can pack them away and do the next four and go from there, so. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can do right now. So I'm gonna end it here. We're gonna pick up in the next video where I'll build all this together. And fingers crossed, we have two working batteries. It's all that matters at the end of the day. So that's the next video. Beyond that, then we're gonna have to strip out everything <laughs> yeah i've got to put i've got to put in new bus bars and new battery chargers and oh everything so yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one and hopefully we can get this sorted but until then have a good one i'll talk to you later bye